This is Democracy Now! and democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. As the United States nears one million deaths from COVID-19, those living in poor and low-income communities suffered twice as many deaths as wealthier counties. That's the finding of a new report by the Poor People's Campaign and economists at the UN Sustainable Development Solutions Network. This is Dr. Sherelle Barber, director at the Ubuntu Center at Drexel University School of Public Health, announcing the report Monday at the National Press Club in Washington, D.C. Yes, she's the daughter of the Poor People's Campaign founder, Bishop William Barber. This poverty and pandemic report is painful. An invisible airborne virus has proven to us that we are caught up in an inescapable network of mutuality and has shown us with vivid detail the deadly cost consequences of systemic poverty and systemic racism in our nation. But even more troubling is our inhumane acceptance of mass death. The Poor People's Pandemic Report draws on testimony from members of the Poor People's Campaign. This is Tyrone Gardner and Fred Womack in Mississippi, followed by Jessica Jimenez, a single mother of three who lives with both her parents in the Bronx. I do have a health concern. I have sarcoidosis, which is an autoimmune disease. And so I was stricken with COVID. My wife, she has lupus. She was also contracted COVID. And because I don't have money, it was 17 days before they even told me I had COVID. Coronavirus had hit our family uh, real hard here in uh, Mississippi, uh, especially in you know the Jackson Central area. Uh, you know, we went through periods where we lost uh, three or four family members, you know, at a time. You know, uh, having four funerals in one day. You know, not being able to pay my rent and bills. Um, on time was one of my biggest worries. You know, I was scared not being able to have a home for my children, um, not having a rent control apartment, not getting any help to pay bills. And it was either paying my bills or having to spend that money on food and things that were necessary for my children. For more, we're joined by the Reverend Dr. Liz Theo Harris, co-chair of the Poor People's Campaign. She's joining us from Martinsburg, West Virginia, where they're launching a protest against Senator Joe Manchin, which we'll talk about in a minute. Reverend Theo Harris, welcome back to Democracy Now! Can you lay out the findings of the Poor People's Pandemic Report, which was released on the 54th anniversary of Dr. Martin Luther King's assassination in Memphis, Tennessee, where he was fighting for the rights of low wage sanitation workers. Well, good morning, Amy, and, and thanks for, for having us on today. Um, we're not celebrating this report. We're, we're deeply mourning the fact that the extent of loss, uh, the gravity of, of how much death um, and how much of it was completely necessary. But, but indeed, what, what, what is shown in this uh, Poor People's Pandemic report is that overall in the pandemic, uh, twice uh, the number of poor people from poor counties um, uh, died from COVID, and in various waves of the pandemic, uh, up to five times the number of, of people in poor counties um, than in richer counties um, died. And, and so the, the report uh, is there's an interactive map, there's, there's a storyboard, there's, uh, I really encourage folks to go to poorpeoplescampaign.org and, and, and check out, there's, there's many, many findings, but it kind of overlays um, COVID deaths county by county, looking at, at about 3,200 counties across the country, um, and looks at, uh, you know, income levels in those counties, look at health care um, coverage in those counties, looks at racial demographics and other demographics in those counties, um, and, and clearly shows um, that after that first wave of, uh, of, of when COVID hit in early of 2020, um, uh, really the mass death um, and loss has been amongst poor people. And vaccination status doesn't explain this alone. Um, uh, you know, there's, there's counties that we, we 
explore in this um, that are, are are highly vaccinated. There's you know uh, double boosted. Um, there's there's counties that are um, with low vaccination rates in in all income areas. Um, but what is as clear also across all of the income groups and counties is that that poor people are dying at least two times as much. And Rep. So why choose uh, West Virginia as the place for the, uh, this uh, Poor People's Campaign March, the 23 miles from Harper's Ferry uh, to Martinsburg? Yes, indeed. So we're we're here. You know, we 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 launched this report yesterday, showing how uh, our our country has gotten used to unnecessary death, especially when it's the death of poor people, low income people. Um, and you know, here in West Virginia, where I am currently, um, you know, it's it's one of the poorest states. There are 710,000 people in this state who are poor and low income, and yet uh, you have senators in this state who have refused. To expand uh, health care, expand, um, you know, raise wages, um, pass any kind of build back better and and extend the child tax credit. Um, uh, and, and that doesn't just hurt folks in West Virginia, but it hurts people across the country. And so leaders of the West Virginia Poor People's Campaign and other community leaders um, uh, uh, decided to organize a, a march. It's a moral march on Senator Manchin. Uh, uh, we will be marching from Harper's Fair, from from Storer College, where uh, the second meeting of the Niagara Movement um, and 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 you know Du Bois and and so many powerful leaders, freedom fighters in our country's history, uh, you know, met and and figured out how do we keep a struggle going. Um, and we'll march, you know, to Martinsburg to to Senator Manchin's. Uh, you know, offices there. Uh, there will be demonstrations uh, at, at various places, including um, the coal waste plant, uh, where Manchin uh, makes his money off of coal, uh, and and you know, really highlighting the connection between uh, the the evils, the interlocking injustices that the Poor People's Campaign has taken up, uh, you know, poverty and racism and ecological devastation and militarism and this distorted, this false narrative of religious nationalism that kind of uh, covers up um, these wide and deep injustices that just do not have to be. Um, you know, people here in West Virginia uh, deeply uh, need and want um, uh, to lift the load of poverty and to address these issues and see the connections between environmental issues and health issues, as well as poverty and, and labor and, and racism. Um, and, and yet uh, the elected officials here are, are not putting forward the kinds of programs on a, a state level or on a national level um, to actually get uh, to actually address these these injustices and, and make life better for the people. And you and Bishop Barber and other members of the uh, Poor People's Campaign have called on President Biden uh, to meet at the White House with a delegation of, of poor and low wealth uh, people and religious leaders. Certainly at the Democratic Convention, when uh, Biden was nominated, a, a lot of attention was paid to uh, the issues of the poor. But uh, has there been any response from the president about this? Well, it, it, it does seem that the president's handlers are—, are, uh, are 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 kind of holding this up. Um, we we have gotten every indication that President Biden is interested in meeting. Um, you know, when he addressed uh, the Poor People's Campaign in the election and and after the inauguration, he he said that ending poverty would be not just uh, you know an aspiration but a theory of change. And and so so what the report that we launched yesterday shows uh, is just one more uh, kind of exclamation point on the fact that that we. We need this meeting between poor and low-income people, uh, folks that have been, who have lost loved ones in this pandemic and who were losing loved ones um, to poverty and racism and, and the destruction of our environment um, and militarism, you know, even before um, and, and made worse during this pandemic. And so, indeed, uh, it's, it's, it's impossible to, to be able to really hear the pain and, and come up with the solutions that are at hand that, that we do have um, without uh, such a meeting. Um, and so we're, we're calling for that meeting. And then we're also organizing for a massive poor people and low wage workers assembly, a moral march on Washington and to the polls this coming June 18th, um, where thousands upon thousands of poor and low income people from all across the country will be in Washington, D.C., making sure that our voices are 
are heard and our agenda is clear that that uh, we we can't keep on letting people die and uh, and have lives diminished because of uh, uh, this this injustice and and because of poverty in this the richest country in human history how how is it that we can have half of the world half of the U.S. population experiencing some some form of of poverty um, when it just it, it just doesn't have to be.